In Svelte, you're going to learn the concept about data binding, which is just keeping your application state and user interface synchronized. It supports data binding using the bind directive. So you often have a value that other parts depend on, for example, if you have a text search input and want to filter a list of items whenever the user types a search query. You can implement data binding in JavaScript, but it's not part of the language, so you often get the value from the event. This is true for other JavaScript frameworks like React that use a synthetic event system and doesn't have data binding. So you can look at such an example using JavaScript. Let's create an input, which is going to be of type text. And let's create an empty list item. Let's create a script tag and let's create a list of items that's going to be the lovely react, lovely view and lovely svelte. And then we can keep track of the filtered list items so we don't change the original list or mutate it. So let's add some event listeners with let input element, which is document query selector input and let list element document query selector ul so let's create the filtering function so we're going to create filter list we're going to take an event we need a search query so here's what i was talking about if we want what the user typed in we have to access it using event target value and then we can have a filtered list. It's a list filter. And we're going to go over each item. And then we're going to return an item. We're going to turn it to lowercase. So it doesn't matter what the user typed. And then we're going to make sure it includes the search query that's also to lowercase. And then when we're done, we're going to update the UI, of course. Here is our update UI function. So list element, inner HTML, and it's just a filtered list. We're going to map over each item, and it's just going to return us an li, and just close it. It's going to take an item as a description, and then we need to join it because it's going to return an array. And then after that, we're going to say input element, we're going to have the event listener, I'm going to say filter list. And then when we say react, we're going to see react. And if we say view, it's going to show us you or swell because it's going to match some of the same characters, right? And then if you're going to be more specific, it's going to return just you, just Svelte. So how would we do the same using Svelte? So instead of using event target value, which we could also do in Svelte, we can bind the value of the text input instead to the search query variable, right? So let's see how that looks like in Svelte. So again, we can open and close the script tag. We can define our lovely list of all the beautiful frameworks. Make you Svelte. We can say filtered list. And then we can say what the search query is here. And then we can just copy over the function since it's irrelevant. Oh, just do this. So you can create the input. We can make our life easier by formatting it like this. We can say on input do what? Filter list. This is where we would have our default value, but we can bind the value, in this case, to the search query. So this value of input is going to correspond to this each time the user types something in and it changes. And we can just say type text. And then let's loop over the search results. If I can type. Oh, it's rough today, boys. Okay, so let's go. So we can loop over it using each. So each filtered list as item. And then we can end the each. We can say li, and then we can just say item. 
Maybe it should work. So let's try. I'm sure it does. You can get React. If we start typing view, you can get view and Svelte, just view and Svelte. So binding is really handy in Svelte. You can have text, numeric, checkbox, group, and text area, among other bindings. When you're going to use an element in your own project you need a binding for, just open the Svelte documentation or you can read the Svelte tutorial. So if you go to the docs here, you can see the bind property and you can see all the things you can do with it. It even has media element bindings that give you all the things from a media element you would like, like duration, buffered, plate, seekable, seeking, ended, and etc. So this is really useful. 